Sadly, you cannot extend your PGWP, and when it expires, you cannot work or stay in Canada. So what options do you have? Well, first of all, no need to panic. Over the years of helping thousands of people with immigration and building this amazing community, we've identified the most effective strategies that I'll share with you in this video. The last one is called h &C. It's something not many people cover due to limited understanding of how it works. So you might learn about it for the first time. And to give you complete knowledge, I'll have one of my immigration lawyers explain how you can get PR through it. Now there are over 1 million international students in Canada. Most of them transition to a PGWP and then hopefully to permanent residency. Depending on the category, you will need anywhere from 360 points if you speak French, all the way up to 525 or more if you don't have a specialized job in trades or STEM and can only count on a general express entry draw. Let's be honest, it's quite out of reach for most international students. But if you do qualify, this could be your golden PR ticket. The best way to find out is by using our PR indicator. Just type in your job and it shows how likely you are to get permanent residency with it. If your scores do not align with the recent express entry draw, here are three ways you can use to stay in Canada and continue working towards PR, plus a bonus one at the end. Number one, Labor Market Impact Assessment or LMIA. It allows you to get a closed work permit for up to three years and eventually get enough points for PR. It involves both IRCC and ESDC. How does it work? I need to emphasize that the next step-by-step -step guide is not only for you, but something you can present to your employer if they're willing to help you. Number one, confirm a job vacancy cannot be filled by Canadians or permanent residents. Number two, advertise the job across various Canadian platforms for at least four weeks. Number three, submit an LMIA application to Employment and Social Development ESDC with proof of job ads, job offer details, and processing fee. Number four, ESDC assesses the impact of hiring a foreign worker on the Canadian labor market. Number five, if approved, the employer receives a positive LMIA, indicating a foreign worker is needed. Number six, the worker uses the positive LMIA to apply for a work permit. And finally, a positive LMIA supports your eligibility for permanent residency under specific immigration programs. An LMIA is generally required for each specific job position rather than for each individual employee. This means that if an employer needs to fill multiple vacancies for the same job position with the same terms, like the same job duties, location, and wage, a single LMIA application may cover multiple foreign workers. However, if the job positions are different, each one would typically require a separate LMIA. The key factor is the specificity of the job offer, including the nature of the job, location, and other employment conditions. Each LMIA application is assessed based on the impact that hiring a foreign worker for that specific position will have on the Canadian labor market. Key points to remember. Keep records of the recruitment process, like a spreadsheet for interviews conducted. Prepare for the LMIA processing fee. Last but not least, it's highly recommended to do this process with a consultant or a lawyer as it's easy to misunderstand something and make an irreversible mistake leading to a refusal. We have a service for this. If you're interested, speak with your employer and book a consultation in the description to this video. Number two, AAP, Atlantic Immigration Program. This will apply to you if you studied in Atlantic Canada for at least two years. AAP can be a direct pathway to permanent residency. Let me give you an example. Leah, an international student in Nova Scotia, starts working at a hotel, and the company is on the AAP designated employers list. As soon as she starts, the hotel helps her obtain a nomination. Leah applies for PR, and in six months, she gets her permanent residency status. Normally, you need one year of experience for this process, but international graduates in Atlantic Canada here have a fast lane. They can shortcut the experience, as getting a permanent full-time job offer alone is enough to initiate the process. Some employers play games and make you work a bit before they can help you start with the process, but it's rather individual. 
It's important you understand that when it comes to the Atlantic Immigration Program, not all employers are equal, as each province in Atlantic Canada has their own list of designated employers. Only these employers can help you with PR through AAP. So how do you find it? Well, it's important that you watch the following tutorial very carefully. So let's say that you're based in Nova Scotia. It could be New Brunswick, could be Newfoundland, could be PEI. There's four provinces. Then you want to type into Google AAP Nova Scotia employer list. And you want to make sure that you're on the official provinces website. So in this case, it's novascotiaimmigration.com. You click on this list and you want to make sure that it's for the current year. So you want to see when uh, the list was updated. In our case, it's current as of February 29th, 2024. This was the last time they updated the list, but you want to make sure that you're checking the most recent employer list. And then you go through all of these employers, which are abundant, there are so many of them. And then you want to find something that works for you. So maybe it's uh, HPSC, or maybe you want to work at, let's say this um, global fine foods, if you are in, in that type of stuff. Or um, let me give you an example. If you work in IT or IT support, um, there's a call center company called Concentrix. Let's see if we can find it on this list. Yes, Concentrix Technologies and Services. So let's say that I identified an employer. Now I need to start applying. And by the way, the more applications you make, the higher your chance of getting something eventually. So then I'm going to go on Indeed or LinkedIn, search for the company, search for the roles they're hiring. And in my case, let's say I have experience in technical support. So I'm going to um, start applying. Now, the problem is with so many applications, it's going to take a lot of your time and cause unnecessary paperwork. How do you reduce that? So reduce the time that you spend on it and reduce the unnecessary resume making, tailoring to each specific job, cover letter making, it takes way too much time. Now there is a new way, let me show you. We built something called a job helper. It's an AI tool that makes custom resumes and cover letters for each job just by copying and pasting the job description and your skill set. And it's gonna come up with something like this, Canadian standard resume and cover letter as well. So when you get it, uh, you start now, uh, you log into it. What it's going to ask you is a few contact information questions, and then it will ask you to copy and paste the exact job description. Uh, so all you want to do is go back here, um, select the full job description, everything. And just copy paste literally. And then the system, what it does, after you entered uh, some of your skill sets and of course a relevant experience, you submit it. And what it does is the system will create a resume that matches the required keywords so that it increases your chances of getting past the ATS system, automatic tracking system that most companies use to basically filter out resumes. So it helps you be in front of humans and see within seconds, you have this custom resume. Perfect. And then you can edit it in here. You can download and you can do the same with your cover letter. Just a few questions you answer, copy, paste the description, submit, you're good. Boom. Again, if you're interested, the links will be in the description. Get Job Helper to minimize the time it takes you to apply to so many different jobs. Next, Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot or RNIP. It's very similar to AAP. You need to find a job in one of the designated communities, for example, Sudbury or North Bay. After receiving a job offer, you must apply for and receive a recommendation from the participating community. Each community has its own recommendation process, which usually involves demonstrating how you and your family, if applicable, plan to become part of the local community and contribute. Once you have a job offer and a community recommendation and you meet the federal eligibility criteria, you can apply for permanent residence through IRCC. A reminder, Job Helper can also help with the job application process to make it fast and easier. Now we have arrived at the most interesting, PR in Canada on humanitarian and compassionate grounds. The simplest explanation of agency is you've been in Canada for a few years bring some economic benefit like having a job and paying taxes. 
cannot apply for PR under any stream and it's dangerous for you to go home. Maybe you're part of the LGBTQ community or your country is going through a war. Here's a more detailed explanation with our Canadian immigration lawyer. So it's exactly as you mentioned, it's a humanitarian or compassionate application to remain in Canada. So it can only be done in land. But before we even talk about, as we say, H or C, but everybody calls it HNC. So we're going to use the common term. Let's discuss when to use it. I think that's the first question. So when we get, let's say, anybody came as a student, went to school, graduated, doing the PGWP, but for whatever reason, they don't have enough points under the Express Entry or they don't qualify under a provincial program, then they always come to us and really say, please uh, find something, okay? Like we, we can't go back. Uh, it's very tough for us to go back. It's very hard for us to go back. We invested so much, we're established here. Uh, it's gonna be a disaster for my family overseas if I go back and everybody got their own reasons. And that's when we start looking at all the options. And one of the options, which is not necessarily the first option we look at, and we'll discuss why in a second, is the humanitarian or compassionate grounds application. So it's essentially an application that you can use or the applicant can use whatever factors they believe will show that they have a hardship of applying for permanent residence from outside of Canada. So it can be a range, it's so unique. It's one of those cases, it's not a point system. It's not, okay, I speak English, I'm working in IT, I'm fine. It doesn't work this way. It's really individualized, it's really specific. And there are many factors and you just, here you have few of them for, of course, establishment in Canada. How long have you been here? Can you support yourself? Do you have any children? whether Canadian or not. How old are the children? Are there any medical issues? Are there any criminal issues? Is there any specific risk or hardship in the home country? Maybe a case of family reunification. So I'll give you an example. As many people know, to sponsor parents or grandparents right now, it's very difficult. Why? Because they have a lottery system, which is kind of closed since 2020. And we have cases that the Canadian doesn't have anybody in Canada, or maybe their parents are alone in the home country and they came for a visit, but they really need them to stay. So right now, humanitarian is used as the, the tool for that. So there are many, many factors. It's very important. I always tell clients, this is not a point system. It's not an absolute system. You really have to talk to a specialist. Well, let's talk about citizens of what countries can rely on this application. It's important that we state before we begin talking about this, that all these uh, country flags you see on the screen are just examples. And it does not guarantee that if you come from, let's say, Ukraine, and because there's a war happening right now, uh, you will be granted PR on HNC grounds. Ronan, let's talk about good examples. So let's start from uh, the letter. Let's say that you are an African national, let's say you're from Cameroon or from Nigeria, you're gay or lesbian, and these countries uh, criminalized such individuals. So going back home would be life-threatening. Is that a good case? Yeah, so it's definitely a good case. So we always say we divide humanitarian cases to what's inside hardship to leave Canada and then hardship at the home country. So that obviously will go into that and those are good cases but as always credibility and the evidence is very very important here so uh, with this example um can a gay person from nigeria uh, claim that uh they need to get pr based on hnc because um being gay is criminalized is that enough of an evidence that on, alone i don't think that's enough alone okay but it depends on the circumstances and the experience of that person like was he targeted or did he have other issues uh, did they know no jobs right so it's really case by case for safe the question like one factor and that's gonna do it no it unfortunately mm -hmm. it doesn't work this way perhaps it's some uh, threats from back home maybe uh, somebody in the family found out and then they threaten them with a text with a call with a letter does that count yeah, again, it's one of the facts. Like, so if somebody came to our office with that, would we take 
a case like that, knowing, of course, more details, yes, but can we guarantee that, hey, you have this and an officer is going to approve you? No. And at the end of the day, you have to look at the totality of the evidence. So up here, we have Ukraine, we have Palestine, obviously, we have uh, Myanmar. These countries have an active war happening right now. Would somebody who, let's say, moved here from Ukraine a few years ago, um, whose home was destroyed, let's say it's eastern Ukraine, would they qualify? Yeah, they will qualify, but I can tell we have Ukrainian cases, okay? And and the success, we don't, we didn't, you know, honestly submit one, okay, there's war in Ukraine, that's it. No. So again, we look at when they came to Canada. Are they working? Are they established? Uh, are they involved in the community? And, and then that's only one of the factors. But to say that there's a war in some region of the world and that will grant you permanent residence, it, it's not accurate. Needless to say, there are additional ways you can stay in Canada if your PGWP is expiring that do not lead to a PR, like applying for a new study permit or visitor permit. But if you're specifically interested in staying here as a permanent resident, feel free to book a strategy consultation with our immigration lawyer in the description to this video to see what's best for your specific case. Also, our PR Now webinar still has seats. If you'd like to learn more about it, click on the link in the description. Thank you for your time. So many of you are watching our videos, which means that what I'm doing is something right, something that helps many people. Like this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you in this video next.